With us now, New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman, who's the author of Hot, Flat, and Crowded, Why We Need a Green Revolution and How We Can Get, How We Can Renew America, How It Can Renew America. Tom, uh, let's just, let's start with some basics. I, I think you're one of the most qualified writers to answer these questions. So let's start by asking, what does Hamas want? Why did they fire missiles into Israel? What can Israel do to appease Hamas in a positive way? What do they want? Well, you know, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Hamas says they want an end to the uh, economic blockade, basically, that Israel had imposed on Gaza. But Israel imposed the blockade after Hamas, uh, you know, fired rockets into Israel. So um, uh, it, it really is not clear to me, Joe, what their long-term strategy is. The fact is Israel got out of Gaza uh, several years ago um, and uh, basically created a situation there where uh, the Palestinians there, Hamas later took over from Fatah in Gaza. Uh, they had a choice, they had an opportunity. They could either turn Gaza into Singapore, they could turn it into Somalia. They could either focus on trying to build the economic and edu educational foundations of Gaza uh, or, or focus on uh, perpetuating the, the struggle with Israel. And, and unfortunately, you know, you have to say Hamas has done the, the latter, not the former. Tom, uh, Israelis, a lot of Americans don't realize this. Israelis are exhausted with this ongoing conflict. At the same time, they feel like they gave Yasser Arafat in 2000 and 2001 everything he could have asked for. They gave, we gave the Palestinians democratic elections uh, and they elected Hamas. So do the Israelis see any way out of this mess? Well, I think in fairness, Joe, both sides are, are exhausted. I, I always um, felt about the Oslo peace accords that uh, in some ways both sides went into them a little bit with their fingers crossed. Uh, Arafat, you know, uh, built peace with one hand and um, continued to support terrorism with the other. Uh, Israelis built peace with one hand, but also continued to build settlements, legal and supposedly illegal, all over the West Bank with the other. So, you know, there was a little bit of, um, you know, sleight of hand going on from both sides. But as we look at Gaza, the situation there was different. Both sides were really exhausted with each other. Israel, uh, under then Prime Minister Sharon, uh, took the unprecedented decision of unilaterally withdrawing. Um, uprooting the Israeli settlements, getting out, handing it over to the then Palestinian Authority. Um, and a few days later, Hamas started launching rockets into Israel. And, and that's really, that's just really inexplicable in, in terms of the long-term interests of the Palestinian people. Tom, I, we've, I heard, we've, heard, we've heard land for peace now for years. Doesn't that prove that land does not equal peace for the Palestinians, or at least for Hamas? Well, it, it certainly raises questions about uh, what are Hamas's long-term interests here, and, and I think in a much more damaging way, Joe, and this could be the interests of Iran, which has been a main supplier of uh, Hamas's military hardware. What, what Hamas is doing, Joe, with these rocket attacks is really killing the prospects of what I believe is the only solution here, which is a two-state solution with Palestinians getting the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem. Why, why are they killing that? Because when Hamas launches rockets from Gaza into Israel, and they hit Steyrot, a small Israeli town near the border, that's one thing. It's bad, but that's one thing. But if they start launching rockets that hit Tel Aviv, um, you are going to see the end of a two-state solution because there is no way Israel is going to turn over the West Bank and put its international airport under the threat of homemade Iranian imported rockets. So this has got to stop. If, if you are a lover, a believer, a supporter of a two-state solution, that is what is at stake here. And, and Tom, you've, you've brought up Iran twice. Actually, could... Iran's involvement with Hamas would be one of the reasons why you have Egypt. Uh, Mubarak, who in 2000 was actually encouraging Arafat not to take the deal from Bill Clinton, now being seen as somebody that's actually uh, siding with the Israelis by blocking off uh, routes into Egypt. Is it, or is it a fear well, of Joe, Iran you hit that's on, driving I think that? Yeah, you hit on an important point in that basically in Gaza today, you have three different conflict struggles at work. Uh, struggle number one is 
Who, who's the big dog in this neighborhood? Okay, and that's a struggle now between Iran on one side supporting Hamas uh, and Egypt and Saudi Arabia on the other. So you have a, a, an intra-state conflict uh, among the Arab Muslim states of the region. Iran being a Muslim state. Uh, Egypt, Saudi Arabia being an Arab state. So you've got to struggle over them, over who's, who's going to really set the terms of this neighborhood. And Iran acting through Hezbollah and Hamas is really confronting Saudi Arabia and Egypt. Second, you have a struggle over, you know, does Israel belong? Should it be allowed to stay here? There you have a split among Palestinians between Fatah, um, led by Mahmoud Abbas in the West Bank, that's been negotiating a long-term peace deal with Israel, and Hamas, which has rejected uh, any acceptance of Israel. So that's the second struggle. But you got a third struggle going on also, Joe, and that's within the Muslim world. And that's reflected in what happened in Iraq while all this has been going on in Gaza. We saw Islamist groups in Iraq are blowing up a reconciliation meeting last week among tribal leaders and just yesterday uh, what appeared to be Sunni bombers, Sunni Islamist bombers blowing up a Shiite mosque. Now you, so you've got this struggle over the future of Islam going too and that's played out between the religious Hamas organization and the secular Fatah group. So you got three struggles converging here all at once. And Mike Barnacle, how fascinating that actually the Arab League last week you had the leaders of Saudi Arabia actually criticizing the Palestinian people, saying, yeah. we, we're not going to be able to solve this for you. Softly. It's, it's long, mm. Softly. Softly. But, yeah. but the, you really are starting to see cracks in that alliance. Tom Friedman, here's a difficult chore. Educate me. Here's the situation, as some people see it. The, for Hamas, the delivery of missiles is much easier than the delivery of services to the Palestinian people. And yet you've got hundreds of thousands of people who have lived for decades as refugees. Tell me about the pipeline, the education slash information pipeline that supposedly people, the Palestinians, refugees, would be aware of what is happening with the people who pretend to lead them. And they lead them into war instead of civility. Where's the breakdown here in terms of people getting the kinds of information that we would need to make an informed decision about our leadership out or in? What's, what's happened? Well, you know, the Gaza, um, uh, Mike, has always been much more an isolated political space, say, than the West Bank. So the main university in Gaza is the Islamic University there, unlike the West Bank, where you have a range of, of both religious and secular universities. Um, you know, I, I'm not an expert on, on Palestinian education. Uh, I, I have been to Gaza, though, many times over the years, and, and it's a poor and broken, uh, isolated, orphan land. There, there's no question uh, uh, about that. Um, but, you know, if you think about the, the people there, they they did vote uh, back in uh, what was it um, 2006 to um, to bring Hamas. Uh, to power. They, they did have an election there. Um, I believed at that time, frankly, uh, Israel had an interest in negotiating with Hamas uh, to see if you could bring them around. Israelis argued, and I understood why they argued it, well, we'll negotiate with them only when they recognize Israel, renounce violence, and agree to all previous Israeli-Palestinian agreements. Uh, Hamas would not do that. And, you know, there is something, we have to listen to what Hamas is saying. These these people are dedicated to building an Islamic state in Palestine. They've never backed off that. Um, and it's not like Palestinians can actually take to the streets or challenge them. Some agree with them, some don't, but the threat of violence is always going to hang over them too. All right. All right. Hey, Tom, thank you for being with us uh, on this day. I. We're going to be needing to hear from you a great deal in the coming weeks. Hope, you, hope you'll keep coming back. Good to see you.